You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike and this is going to be a, uh, a rundown of my top 10 favorite pens that I have acquired this year. I keep a list. You might know that I get a lot of pens, uh, but I keep a list of those things and so I wanted to show some of them to you today. So I have those 10 pens and also uh, a couple of pens, or I should say uh, two pens and a new clip that were uh, made for me by friends and I'll show those at the end of the at the end of this video. So we'll, uh, hold tight for those. All right, so this list includes some new stuff, some old stuff, a couple of things that are probably like grail level pens uh, that uh, that I've acquired. So let's get rolling. The top uh, two, three spots are going to be uh, taken up by Shone Designs this time. Uh, and that's because, darn it, Ian Shone has been making such great stuff this year. Uh, this actually wasn't my first. Here we go. This was my first of these pens, which are the full-size Shone Design fountain pens. I love these things. They're extremely comfortable to write with. The anodization patterns just just make me happy. I mean, look at this thing. Look at that. So nice. Uh, the sections in here match those. Uh, generally, I'll get them f without a uh, without a nib, like at a pen show or something like that. And then I can just put one of my mini nibs in there. But these take a number six Yovo nib. They have a, uh, a converter or a cartridge uh, filling system. Very convenient for me. And these are always on my desk. Uh, this one lives in a pen well. Uh, and it's got one of my favorite inks in it, which is a Pannonia ink, uh, Draculea. And then this one sort of lives over here. It's held up by this little guy who is actually meant to hold uh, spoons and pot lids and stuff, but he works very well as a pen holder. So he sits on my desk and holds this pen, which has uh, Marzen Athena Blue, I believe, in it, which is a fantastic permanent ink. So I've been using these a lot, and I really like this pen. This was new this year, so psyched about those. Um, next up, the Shone Anniversary Pen, and I actually have a pair of these as well, uh, because uh, one of these, I see, Ian, even, Ian gave me this one and this one for review and to show people and that sort of thing, and I was like, I, I gotta get more, so I did. So this is a really cool pen, and it's the only pen in here that is, not strictly speaking, a, uh, a fountain pen. The rest of these are gonna be fountain pens. This one has a rollerball tip in it right here, but as you can see, it is fed by fountain pen ink, so I'm gonna say it counts. Also, there is a fountain pen section for this that I have. And uh, you can also get a uh, ballpoint section to make this into a ballpoint. It's a very versatile pen. It's pocket sized and screw that on there. Uh, this is the um, uh, bronze version, I want to say, although it has not actually uh, patinaed very much, which is interesting. Usually I patina things very quickly, but I guess this br uh, bronze that Ian is using is not terribly uh, patinaable for me, so that's interesting. But I really like this pen. It's got a good weight, a good heft, and I never have to worry about anything in my pocket hurting it. Up, hurting it. This is the aluminum version, and this is one I bought at the DC Pen Show because, oh my goodness, look at how awesome this is. This uh, pattern was designed by uh, one of the folks in Ian's crew there at his shop, and uh, she did an amazing job on it. And I realized it, it looks a lot like this one, which is another that I just could not pass up at one of the pin shows. Also, check out that little glyph. Ah, that's how I felt when I saw this pen. What does this one have? Does this have a glyph? Mm, it's just got the anniversary glyph right there. There's little, that little dot pattern there. But this one is uh, full on ballpoint mode there with the matching section and all that. And uh, I carry this a lot. It is a great pen. So there you go. There's two of the, the three shown design pens that ended up, ended up in my top. Here's the last one. This is the Shone Design Smultum, which is made of Ultum. This is a black version of that. He's got this in black and amber. And this one is a fountain pen. It's a little pocket pen, but it actually is kind of the biggest pen that he makes once you uh, once you screw the back on there. So it's not really all that small, but it is very light. Um, I eyedropper this pen. Um, I, I filled the barrel of this thing. Uh, I mean, it's it's this much ink basically and uh, what have I got here a fine nib I haven't quite gone through my first fill of ink in this thing uh, Although I do use it a fair amount, but this fine nib I think is just uh, really stretching uh, The ink capacity of this sucker and it is a great pen It lives on my desk at all times or gets thrown in my pocket when I want to pocket carry a fountain pen because it's Ultim and Ultim is uh, tough as nails, really great stuff, love this little pen, really good in the hand, good in the pocket, and uh, works well all the time. So those spots all taken up by, by shown pens, although I guess these aren't in any particular order, I just kind of grouped them together because they're the same maker. All right, so now something that is um, older, this is a Pilot Fermo, 
You see it says Pilot Fermo there. And this is a version of the Vanishing Point, sort of. It has a retractable nib. Uh, and it uses the same nibs and everything that the Vanishing Point uses. But instead of having a knock that you click, it has a one that you spin. Uh, and it's very satisfying to... <laughs> you just like nudge it and it goes shunk and like goes right back in. I really like this pen. Uh, I bought this from um, my friend Jack who watches this channel every once in a while. And I do hope I get to see Jack here soon. Uh, but I've really been enjoying this pen. It's one that has uh, just kind of surprised me by how much I like it because I'm not the biggest Vanishing Point fan. I've got several, several? I've got two or three of them and I do really like them. But uh, somehow they don't find their way into my pocket all the time, and this one, I just keep re-inking this thing. I really like it. So there you go. There's that one. All right. Uh, next up, something new-ish. This is the Diplomat Elox. It took me entirely too long to get one of these. These came out, I guess, uh, a bit over a year ago, I, I suppose. I think I first saw one of these at the DC Pen Show a couple of years back. Maybe that. And it took me until the Triangle Pin Show this year to get one. I don't know why, just because, I, I don't know, pin shows weren't really happening that much, and I just kind of hadn't. But I got this one from uh, from uh, Jimmy's table at the, uh, the Triangle Pin Show for a really great price, and I really like this pen. It looks like it's going to be all slippery and slick, but it's actually very nice to write with. This anodized section has a good feel to it. And uh, this is this has become one of my very favorite of this arrow design, although it's technically the Elox. There are a couple of more of these. There's a purple one and a green one. No, sorry, a purple one and a blue one. And there's a green one called the Matrix, which has like a line design on it, which is really cool. But I don't have those. I have this orange Elox, and that is way up my alley. All right, here is the next one. This one might be a little bit of a surprise. It was definitely a surprise to me. In fact, it made this list because it was uh, such a shock that I enjoyed this. This was uh, this was sent to me by a vendor called Pen Heaven out in the UK in London. And this is a teeny tiny little pocket pen. Pocket pens are really well represented on this list, aren't they? Uh, and I had always avoided this pen, as you'll remember from my review, because I thought it would be too small and just like impossible to write with. But for me, this is actually a very nice pocket pen. Uh, it's a good size. I wouldn't want to write a novel with it, I suppose. Uh, and it doesn't really hold that much ink, especially not with this T90 little converter, which I have totally written dry uh, and I need to uh, to clean out and, uh, and re-ink because this is a pen that I use a lot. So there you go, Kaveco Lilliput makes the list for one of my favorite pens I got this year. Uh, and I had avoided this thing for years because it's just so tiny and, and just, look at it, it's so small, so small, but so mighty. All right, there we go. Uh, next one is the exact opposite end of the scale. And that is this. This is the Franklin Christoph Model 50 and I, I am a big fan of the 50. In fact, I have two of these now. This one I want to say is ugh, Polar Ice or something like that. The other one is in my list, uh, my bin of pens that I need to clean. So I don't have that. But that's an Olive A, which is a really beautiful olive color uh, material. But I really like the, uh, the Franklin Christoph Model 50. It is massive. It is a desk pen. It doesn't fit in most pen cases, uh, but it will fit in some. And otherwise, it's just sitting on my desk anyway. So who cares, right? Just this big, like, icy wand of a pen hanging out. Uh, fits my hand really well. It's quite light because of the acrylic. And uh, and I just really like writing with it. I think it's a great pen to look at and to use. So Franklin Christoph 50, uh, I got two of those this year. I liked it so much. In fact, that's a, that's starting to be a trend. <laughs> Things I've, I like, I've gotten two of. This is another one that I've kind of gotten two of. Uh, and this is the Glow in the Dark Twisby Eco. There are two of these. I got both of them because it's a really neat little gimmick. Uh, this one has Pannonia um, uh, Strigoi in there, which is a black ink with all this like red micro or nano pigment really uh, in the in the ink. And I've really been enjoying that. This one glows blue in the dark. This one glows bright green. So uh, these are a real triumph. I've seen some Glow in the Dark pens before, but none of them have done it as well as these two. Actually, let's see what happens if I shut my lighting off here. I haven't like exposed these to light very much, but let's go ahead and see. 
Nope, that didn't work. My, my camera adjusted too well to low light, just for the ambient light coming from my computer case over here and that sort of thing. So anyway, this glows bright green. This one glows bright blue, which is a really neat thing. And uh, again, something I like so much, I got two of. All right, now on to the two like kind of grail level pens. Uh, this is the Pilot Custom 845 in Vermilion. And I picked this up from a friend on Slack. This is a very cool pen. This one is Arushi, and it's one of the ones that my wife can't touch. Audrey is sensitive to Arushi. Uh, so she doesn't mess with these, but uh, I decided to go ahead and do it. This is the smaller mm, cousin, sibling, maybe sibling actually, of the Pilot Custom Arushi, which is a ridiculously large pen. But this one is perfectly sized. I think it uses one of my favorite nibs which is the number 15 nib from Pilot. I love these things. They're the same nibs you'll find in the 823, uh, which I thought I had sitting here in front of me, but I don't actually, oh, yeah, I do, uh, right here. Um, but this one has the tri-color or bi-color nib where you have gold on the outside and silver in the middle. Uh, I really like these nibs. I think they write super well. And this one is a double broad, which is uh, pretty, pretty big. I mean, look at all that tipping. I may get it ground at some point into something uh, that's not just a big blob of tipping, but I haven't yet because I've really been enjoying this uh, this double broad as it is. So there you go, Pilot Custom 845. I let one of these slip away at DC several years ago, and it's like one of the two pens that I regret not getting. So I uh, didn't get away this time, snagged. Okay. This last one, <laughs> this last one is one that I've just gotten. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the li this list because even though I've only had it for about four or five days now, uh, I really like this pen. This is the Sailor King of Pen Christmas Tea Spice Tea. I want to say it's Christmas Spice Tea or something like that. It's actually, uh, it's got too long a name for me to remember, but this is the King of Pen version of this. Uh, this pen from these sets this year. It was the last one at Gold Spot and uh, I... <laughs> Uh, I went ahead and pulled the trigger. The King of Pen has been on my list of pens that I should have for a long time, but it is kingly expensive as well. So I used some, uh, I used some store credit I had. I, I, I managed to, I managed to talk myself into pulling the trigger. Audrey helped. She's like, yes, of course you should get that. So uh, I did. This is a beautiful orange pen with a like interesting brown finial with the uh, the orange disc up here and the Sailor logo. It's got a sparkly acrylic in the cap here. As you can see, it's a little bit of a sparkle. Uh, a little bit of sparkle actually in the body too, although it's very subtle. Then you have this massive nib, which is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. In fact, this pen overall is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Here it is compared to the regular Sailor Pro Gear uh, that it's based on. It is. It is so much bigger. The regular Pro Gear is actually, uh, I mean, it's it's size that I can use it, but it is pretty darn small uh, in my hand. Whereas um, the King of Pen certainly is not. Now, one thing uh, that I wish I could have gotten on this pen was the uh, the dual color nib there. I love the way the gold is inset in this uh, this Pro Gear here, and it would have looked awesome in this massive nib as well. But uh, the gold is how it comes, and uh, it looks great, and it writes beautifully. It's wetter than I thought it was going to be. It's wider than I thought it was going to be. Just so far, no complaints with this uh, this big guy. It is great. So there you are. There's the 10 pens that I got this year uh, that um, uh, were my favorites. So, all right. So now I promised you a couple of bonus ones, and we'll do those right now. Um, so the first one... It was made for uh, was made by my friend Brian Chu of Red Dragon Pens. This is a really unusually shaped pen, and it comes with an even more unusual uh, thing. And that is that he was trying to figure out how to make a pen that you could just screw a um, a sample vial into, and so this was. Uh, his attempt at that. And it works pretty well that way, but I decided to just go ahead and eyedropper this so it's a little bit shorter and all that jazz. He made an end cap for it, uh, and it opens here. And uh, this is a really comfortable pen. It looks a bit odd. Like, you'd think that this, that this section might not be very comfortable or that it would be too stubby, but it's actually so comfortable that I have, uh, I have eyedroppered this twice. <laughs> it's gotten two refills of this backpack um, what is this, Backpack Blue or something like that that it's called. And um, such a good ink, really fits this pen. And uh, I really enjoyed having this one. So this one from Brian Chu, who's a good friend of mine, 
There's the first one of my, my customs. The second, this is really Audrey's pen. <laughs> we found this in the sale binder of our friend John Albert, who makes pens occasionally. And uh, you can see this is a um, this is a dyed and stabilized hemp wood pen. Uh, it's just got a gorgeous, gorgeous chatoyance going on here. Like you'd think it was opal or mother of pearl or something like that, but it's not. It's hemp wood. And then it's uh, got Argentium furniture. I don't have a nib in it at the moment. I just cleaned this out not that long ago. Uh, but just a fantastic pen. Really cool looking. And this one's technically Audrey's, but, uh, you know, kind of ours. And then lastly, a clip. Uh, this is a pen that uh, John Albert made for me. Same guy who made this one. A long a long time ago? I don't know. It was before the pandemic, I think. And I showed it to him at the Triangle Pin Show, and he wasn't super happy with the clip. So he decided to remake a clip for this pen, and he engraved this just just beautifully. Uh, he sent me a picture. He's like, I don't know if you're into this or not, but if you aren't, you know, I'll put it on something else and make you something simpler. And I was like, no, don't you dare. I love it. So, uh, I mean, just look at that. And this is like, this is like practice or something for John. He's very, very talented and has only gotten better. So there you go. Uh, 10 pins plus a couple of bonus, two, two and a half bonuses. Uh, there you go. There you go. But these are, these are uh, custom made pens from small makers who don't do uh, like widespread stuff. So uh, I didn't want to throw them in my absolute top 10 because they're not really obtainable. Whereas these are in some sense obtainable by, uh, by all y'all. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, I hope that y'all got some awesome pens this year. Let me know in the comments, like what was your favorite pen that you got this year? My top two? I don't know. Try to narrow it down. You don't have to narrow it down to 10. I just like decided to go for 10 because it's a good number. So there you go. Uh, uh, thanks very much for watching. Think about what you put out in the world, make it a better place. And, uh, until next time, peace out.